Uh, my name is Baxter Smith. I'm the director of the Innovation Hub at the Green School. And uh, I have here with me the Diana and Dita. Would you like to introduce yourself, Diana and Dita? Hi, I'm Diana. I'm the coordinator of the IHUB. Hello, everyone. My name is Dita, and I'm working as the Robotics and Project Center coordinator at the Innovation Hub. Nice to meet you all today. Great. So, um, we have a presentation to talk about the Innovation Hub, and I'm just going to load it up here in a second. And so the Innovation Hub is our hands-on project-based learning environment. And here's a picture of the, the front of the building that we have. Um, also, as we go along, please feel free to ask questions. We'll, we'll get to them maybe at the end, unless there's a nice time to take a break in the middle. Um, but we really want to share with you um, what we do at the school. Um, here's a little explanation that I'll let you read. The main, the main parts I want to highlight are we are a hands-on project-based learning environment and we are known as the community innovation hub and usually refer to the building as just the iHub. Um, and we really like to use it as a place to learn through exploration, innovation, and creation. And also we encourage students to learn by failure. So something that we'll talk about more, but uh, just a little quick overview. So the team, uh, as of now, there's eight of us. So there's myself as the director. Diana, who's with us, is the coordinator and has a background in biology. Um, Dita, also with us, runs the project center as well as the electronics and robotics parts of the iHub and has a background in engineering and physics. Uh, Suta um, is, runs the bio lab with Andina has a background in science education. Here's Andina. Um, she has a background in art, uh, agricultural technology. The both of them run the iHub and do really amazing things there, which we'll get into. Uh, Ezar focuses on metal and woodworking, has a background in visual communication design. And we also have Dodon, who is focused on bamboo specifically, and a background in carpentry as a professional and Rai, who's mainly working with housekeeping and our craft and so on. Um, so these are the different areas of the iHub, um, starting from the top and moving to the right. We have the project center, which Dita runs, uh, bamboo and woodworking, which we love, um, and metalworking, which we do a bit of, plastic and recycling, CAD CAM, which is where our digital tools are, uh, electrical and robotics, which we'll get into. We're going to get into all these, but just giving a quick overview. We also have the craft and fashion area and our bio lab. So here's just a quick focus points that we like to share and just kind of, you know, this is where we're coming from. Um, we use the STEAM breakdown, the science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics as kind of like a base point for projects and classes to work through, as well as the pies, we like to call the pies, the physical, intellectual, emotional, and social intelligence. Um, so those two kind of combined uh, in different amounts to create some of the classes and the workshops that we do. And we practice um, what's come from the architectural design studio of taking on a topic, moving through brainstorming, researching, creating, iterating on that design, whatever it is, um, getting feedback and getting critiqued, and then presenting a final project. So I'll let Dita talk about her expertise in this area. 
Okay, so thank you so much, Vexta. So uh, Innovation Hub has a space and it is for the electronics and robotic projects. And this space is usually used for the students to explore different activities related to robotics, programming, electronics, uh, and it is open for various ages. So from early years to high school, we have uh, activities for all of them. And IHUB actually has six sets of Lego robots. And you can see in the left uh, pictures that this is like one of the favorite activities for our middle school. Uh, they learn building uh, Legos and then do programming, learn algorithms, and actually we also plan to do competitions. But let's see after this COVID, I hope that we can join some competitions. Uh, and for younger students we also teach them programming and we use different set of uh, pre processors and one of them is microbit uh, we also have arduino and arduino programming is uh, usually used by uh, older students such as high school and then middle school maybe in the third letter you can see some bamboo arduino robots where they make bamboo sculpture and then they combine it with arduino so the bamboo can move and they program it they program them with arduino which is really exciting and how about the smaller kids for example early years or grade one or grade two we still have activities for them we make uh, robots from very uh, simple electronic device such as dancing robot with uh, DC motor and with battery we make like some solar bug um, and we even make robotics hand for younger students so uh, there are a lot of activities that we do on this space uh, basically about electronics and robotics but it's also open for community I think this is all for this slide okay, next great. go to the next slide Mm -hmm. Okay, I will yeah, explain yeah. about yeah, yeah, yeah about the BioLab. BioLab is an experimental lab space where we can use waste materials like use cooking oil and turn it into a product like soap. So students work on hands-on science-based project while also learning entrepreneurial skills such as essential oil product production from gardening to processing to selling or also they learn about virgin coconut oil making including how to building relationship to a local farmers biolab also allows students to learn how to make various natural products in a, a class we call green product we also provide experiments related to biology chemistry and applied science in this space. So as you can see in the screen, that's some of the activity happens in BioLab. Great, um, so moving along here, we have um, uh, Kembali, which in Indonesian means to return. And it is our, um, we like to think of it as our resource allocation management space so maybe easier to explain as a recycling center um, we like things to return to where they came from um, so we work with uh, a few companies in bali to bring them our waste so um, we process about a ton a week and it's open to the community local community as well as parents and we have two recycling stations on campus one in the parking lot which is a bit bigger and one on campus which is a little bit smaller but it's our first stop to go when we are looking for materials for projects um, any kind of class material uh, plastic bottles uh, paper cardboard things that are being recycled and are going to be going to a recycler but before they get there we usually uh, use it for a project and we also have a program called Kambali goes to school which is Kambali Kosekola in Indonesian and it's a program that we've developed now for four years and we're in 10 local schools and we help set up uh, um, resource allocation or recycling stations in these centers or in these schools 
um, we've we've done this now uh, as an, as kind of like a exploration with these local schools. They actually started asking us now, can you install one in our school? They they really like the idea. And what happens is at the end of the week or the end of the month when they have enough materials, they get to sell that to um, either a recycling company or an individual that buys it off of them. Um, and this is just some examples, the half cut glass class that we um, cut wine bottles in half and used the bottom half for a cup and didn't know what to do with the top half. So we started experimenting and the students came up with the idea to make a chandelier out of an old um, bike tire and some uh, wine bottle tops. Okay, so we have the digital playground, um, which is our CAD CAM area, our computer aided modeling um, and machining area. So we have several 3D printers, which you can see there on the left and a very busy laser cutter. It's definitely the busiest machine in the space. Um, it's used for, for class projects. We also tend to use it a lot for prepping for classes. So we'll make uh, templates to use for cutting out uh, geometric shapes that can be built later on. Um, in the 3D printing area, we can also 3D print objects that we'll use for classes. So we had a uh, kindergarten class come in and build a, a coral, coral reef with um, Play-Doh. And we used coral to basically make impressions on the, uh, the Play-Doh which was a lot of fun. And we also used 3D printed coral um, just to get them to see that there's different ways of manufacturing and, and using different textures. And uh, Ibu Diana can talk about art and craft. Um, Ibudian, I think we lost your microphone. Voice. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, art, craft, and fashion classes are available for early years to high school. We adjust the topic based on the age group. For example, early years, we work around paper creations to make puppet or origami. And for primary school, they will take part in paper making, book binding, soap carving. So one thing came up on my mind about my middle school is they like to use sewing machine. So middle school used to sewing machine. And the last class, we have a quest student to learn how to use sewing machine and how to make masks. For high school, uh, class, it's more about natural dye, sewing, their own dress, and etc. We also bring experts from outside to work with us, and we develop the information from them into a learning tools. So we offer craftsmen to have paid workshop in the IHUB. As an exchange, we learn the skill from them. For example, our eco printing class with primary school was the idea that we get from weekly workshop that I have holds every week. Okay, and um, a very loud and exciting area of the iHub is our metal and wood and bamboo area. Um, we have several workstations and many tools that you might find in a wood shop. Um, some things are loud, um, some things are dangerous. Any student that goes into this area is required to go through safety training. Um, we have safety equipment available to all the students and um, we've built many, many projects in this space and using the tools that are in this space. Um, the example that we have here, the, we, we built an amphitheater on campus. Um, I actually took I think in total three classes, so uh, about a year and a half to complete the project, uh, working with the 
school uh, schedule classes um, and fitting in some some time to make that happen. Um, the students designed and then built and completed the entire structure, which is I think about uh, three levels or four levels um, in a space that was very underutilized on campus. And then we really um, like to work with ongoing projects on campus. So we had a, a model UN um, on uh, at Green School this past year, and we designed and built the podiums for that uh, event using bamboo and recycled wood from pallets. Uh, we also used a laser cutter um, just as an extra uh, um, aspect to give the logo for the UN model UN logo and the Green School logo. Okay. Okay. So, um, yep. Okay. Thank you, Baxter. So, when we talk about the project center, um, this is actually like a new part of Green School, uh, like one year and a half. And the project center is aimed to help accelerate the students' project by providing funding, guidance of projects development, mentoring, and connections with resources. So we do uh, have micro grant and micro loans that the students can apply for their schools or patient projects. The funding comes from donations uh, and campaigns that Green School conducted. And this far, we have worked with hundreds of projects and given funding to 62 projects with financial support around USD 6,800. So this is micro grant and loan, but for students, for example, early years that do projects like 200 USD is a lot of things that can do with uh, the project center. It is open not only for green school students, but it is, it is also open for uh, the Cocoa Connection students and green school and English. Uh, Cocoa Connection itself, they are the local school students that learn English at green school. So it's open for all students around green school. And in terms of resources, we have, we have a Google site where we put project development resources such as booklet and project canvas or design thinking tools. Uh, maybe we can go to the next slide, please. Back, sir. So thank you. So you can see here, we do some workshop like design thinking workshop and brainstorming inside or outside classes. And the students can pitch their idea to us and receive some funding. So there is no guarantee that the funding will be given, but this also gives opportunity for students to learn how to pitch and sell their ideas to us. We do have a project board. The location is in the Innovation Hub where we print out all of the projects working with us and you can find uh, you can find information about them. And we have some digital uh, version of that. We put our financial report and we put the, we put the database of project in the Google site. We use it mostly internally, but you can also open it greenprojectshub.greenschool.org. It's in the right corner bottom but it's not really clear but it's open for everyone so that's for the project center and we Great, can thanks, go to questions yeah. that i have um yeah thank you um so um when we're taking on classes we are working directly with the teachers so we think of ourselves as um uh, facilitators to a class. So either a teacher might come in and say, hey, I really want to work on this project, or we might start to look around and say, hey guys, we have something that you might be interested in. Do you want to incorporate it in your class? Um, so it works both ways, and we're always happy to collaborate. Um, we end up going through some kind of ideation phase, uh, getting the class scheduled, getting the materials ready, um, and then teaching the class either directly or with the teacher. Um, we've done, you know, just open up the space for a teacher to come in and use. Uh, we've also led classes and we've also just taught like something 
a skill that you need specifically for um, whatever activity we're looking at. Um, classes range from one time um, to like maybe an hour long class to um, up to three times a week, looking at about six hours um, total for one week. And that can be for six weeks, which is one block of classes. We have six blocks in the school year. Um, it can also, yeah, it can also be uh, mixed in between that amount of time. There's another class that I'll talk about, which is a Jalan Jalan opportunity, um, which is here. So Jalan Jalan is Indonesian for a walkabout, and it's an opportunity for students to get uh, really into projects much more than they would in the normal class setting. So Jalan Jalan is a four hour long block on Wednesdays for middle school and high school students. Um, it's where it's where we can go really in depth on things that you you know that you want to, but don't always have the class time for. And teachers feel that way too. And so we'll, we'll uh, allocate this time for a variety of different things. Um, there's a class that goes surfing. And with that, they learn how to, um, they learn about ocean uh, safety rescue. Um, in this specific case, uh, some examples we have at the iHub um, with primary school, which actually is a different schedule, I should say that they have two hours on Thursdays um, instead of four hours like the high school and the middle school. And that just fits with their timetable. Um, and they do, last semester we had them doing book binding and paper making um, and making essential oils and also working with the robots and the micro bit. So it gives them a chance to really get into it. Um, sometimes when we're working with the robots or the micro bits, it's almost like we've taken the equipment out and now we have to put it all away because the class may be only 40 to 50 minutes long. So when we get that extra hour, it really allows us to get into a project. So that's also an example for the middle school and high school, the half cut class that we did was cutting the glass bottles and we took out all the equipment and over the four hours, we actually got through a lot of the bottles and started to be able to make iterations on our chandeliers that the students had designed and got really into some fun projects. We also did a bamboo construction class, which is this picture. The first class was to make a spear, which they completed and then got inside of, which is great. And then mech shop to learn about machines and engines and take things apart. And um, we started to take apart a car and a motorbike before we uh, now have closed the campus, uh, obviously. So we're, everything's been turned into remote, but we're still using Jalan Jalan time as our screen free days. So every Wednesday we ask the students to uh, prepare to be off their screen, which means Tuesday we'll have Jalan Jalan time where we'll prepare the students to take whatever projects they're working on offline. Um, it's a great opportunity. It really breaks up the students' um, time on the computer, which is not always fun. Um, and we've had some great results with that. So for the younger students, we have something called HOP, which is, stands for Hands-On Projects. So this is specifically for grades four and five. Um, when we're when we're working with, we call it upper primary, we start to see a pretty clear divide between grade three and four, sometimes in grade three, but it becomes more clear at grade four that students are more, uh, they're ready to engage at a deeper level. Um, their attention spans start to focus a little bit more, their dexterity increases, they're able to handle the tools that we are required to take on a project. Um, that we see here, which is working with bamboo and um, or with making a, a water mill with recycled materials, which um, were two of the hop classes that we ran, um, making a frog ladder from bamboo, uh, which we actually installed uh, on the pond, in the pond on campus. And so this one is modeled a little bit like the Leap, uh, Leap Academy, we call it. Um, which stands for the learning experiential and practical. 
and is for the upper, we would say, I guess, older students, the middle school and high school students, and they get a lot more freedom. So the hops classes, they come in um, just for two hours a week uh, versus the leap gets almost 80% of their six week block dedicated to this hands-on student led project uh, program. And so as the iHub, we, we tend to be a place where these groups of students come for the LEAP and the LEAP Junior. Uh, they come to work on these projects. They come for materials and resources and knowledge and expertise, uh, also mentorship. Uh, we love working with them and helping them create successful projects. And here are two examples. So we had a, a LEAP welding class. They made a um, bamboo bike rack and they also made a metal bike rack. And then we also helped mentor their crystal restoration project, which uh, on campus, we have a large crystal. Um, it's said to be placed in, in the perfect spot based on uh, Balinese priests that came and, and surveyed the campus. Um, it's, it's, quite the, it's quite a crystal. It's um, an energy center, you could say. Uh, and the middle school, the, the LEAP junior class decided to uh, restore this part uh, of the campus. So they made it a little bit more accessible, uh, a little bit more greener. You could say they put in um, some grass, uh, made it more of like a meditation space, which is uh, which quite, quite nice. Um, so beyond uh, classes happening and uh, extra class outside of class activities like the hop class and the leap classes. We also have these kind of like milestone classes that the school uses um, as jumping points from fifth grade to sixth grade and from eighth grade to ninth grade and from 12th grade to beyond. So we call those uh, the footprints, which are for the fifth grade students, the quest projects, which are for the eighth grade students and the Greenstone, which is for the 12th grade students. So the footprint project for a fifth grade student usually lasts uh, a couple months and they're mentored by the, the home run teachers and the fifth grade teachers to come up with a project that they'll fulfill. Either they'll make it or they'll design it or they'll prototype it to some way and then they'll present it at the end of the year. Quest project for the eighth graders is a bit more intense, it's usually uh, six months long. Um, they're mentored by the eighth grade uh, middle school teachers. Um, they have a very, very well made booklet that walks students through how to make a project. Um, and we support them on that. They can come in and use the equipment or we can work with them to design for their project, uh, help them with their design. So in the picture here, we have uh, a student, Chenawa, who's an eighth grade student She's making furniture for Bali street moms and uh, she's donating it to them. And even though she's still in Bali, uh, even though the, the campus is closed, she's asked to borrow some tools so that she can continue making this furniture for these street moms that um, are living with without a lot of uh, furniture for themselves to use in their houses. So it's a nice project that she's working on. And then Greenstones for the 12th grade students. Um, tend the prep for that starts uh, the day they be actually before they, and it, it starts in 11th grade. They do a little um, field trip where they do some uh, searching for what, what are their interests? Uh, what do they want to do? And what ends up happening is throughout the 12th grade year, they'll work on this project. They'll usually spend about six months getting an idea together, prototyping it, getting mentors together, and then another six months actually producing the project. So um, those are available. The Greenstones are filmed and are available on YouTube. So you can go and see those. And um, we're mentoring a few of them even now with uh, the distance learning um, still, still for the footprints, the quest and the Greenstone, um, which has been fun to see. So before I explain about the after school activities, I would like to invite you guys to drop a question in the chat section. After school activity happen in the IHUB uh, at 
3.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon. So this is the opportunity to students to try different topics that are not offered with our regular class modules and is also used by students that want to spend more time in a specific part of the IHUB, like BioLab. ASA tends to be small focus group where students can really dive deep in a topic and are not distracted by class time or their peers. So last semester we have I have science and I have craft and also sewing. So there is like three after school activity at the I have in the last semester. Okay. So uh, when we talk about innovation hub, there are just so many things happen at this space and we want the learning experience is available not only for green school students, but also for the community and visitors. We want to bring the green school experience for everyone and we have weekly workshop and tours that open for a community and visitor. There was a question about, are we doing, uh, have, have the students done some renewable energy projects? The answer is yes. Actually, renewable energy is really close to green school. Uh, for your information, we have solar panels at school and also micro hydro and our renewable energy power plan give us 90% of the total energy demand. And we are still trying to be 100%. And all of those uh, projects, we, all, we always involve the students and the activities are different for, for different uh, age groups. So we provide different types of workshop from renewable energy to BioLab uh, and then Kambali. So the BioLab is, you saw it before, uh, outside the students activity, we provide um, workshop for community and visitors to learn different types of byproducts development from biodiesel productions. So in BioLab, they make a candle, they make natural soap, they make bio beauty products, essentials, oil, even hand sanitizer. And we also sell the products to uh, the shop and the community. Uh, we also have a Kembali, Kembali workshop, which is talking about our recycling center. And we also do trash walk during the workshop. And outside those three regular workshops, we have weekly workshop that the topics are changed uh, each week. And usually it's also follow some events such as Christmas or Valentine. So during Christmas, we will open workshop to make bamboo Christmas tree. During Valentine, maybe we are making like Chris, um, Valentine gift workshop, something like that. Uh, we do a lot of paper making and book binding and beauty products uh, and also letter making. And just for your information also, because there was a question about that, uh, the re we have Operation Rain or Shine. Uh, it is student-led renewable energy project and you can search it at Green School YouTube. I think they have some videos about that. And this picture is a uh, solar power box that becomes one of the activity of renewable energy workshops and they make this bug out of recycled materials. And now we can go to the next slide. Okay, so the, the parents and the community, there's a question here. Um, so parents and community are, are encouraged to come into the innovation hub. Um, they can come in different ways. So sometimes people come, they want to be a mentor for a project. So we, we love when that happens. Um, the, the community is very diverse, many backgrounds, and students love to present their work. Um, it gives them a lot of confidence in what they're talking about, how to talk, uh, what their project is. Um, and then beyond that, we have memberships available for the parents. We have had uh, several great projects made uh, in the Innovation Hub, as well as just some people that want to come around and tinker. Uh, what ends up happening sometimes is a uh, parent comes in and they're going to work on one project and ends up that they start to get interested in what we're doing with a class or maybe a greenstone or a quest project 
and then kind of like suddenly become the mentor for them, um, which is super fun to see. And we encourage that. Um, memberships are monthly. So student or sorry, parents can come and, and pay for a membership um, that covers kind of like the running cost of the equipment um, and all the disposable stuff like sandpaper and things that we offer um, for everyone that's working in this space. And we had one example of a project that happened, um, actually it's happened twice. We've had two parents, separate parents, uh, make chess sets for their kids using laser cutter and a few other machines in the space, um, which is just fun to, fun to see and fun to uh, help happen because um, it's a handmade project and the parents get really into it and it becomes a present for their kids, which is, which is nice. Um, so I'll just, I'll go back one slide to the products. So we do sell these products. So this is our solar powered bug that Dito was mentioning. So we sell it in a kit. Um, it's a solar panel with a motor and everything else you need for it can come from uh, your home. Uh, you can be creative. We also offer some of the materials that you can make it with. Um, we also, we make and sell soap. So we have uh, the bio bus. So the bio bus is our fleet of school buses that are powered by biodiesel. Uh, we have six of them and we collect used cooking oil from around the island. Uh, we've partnered with several large organizations to do this. Um, we pick up uh, weekly from them. All that used cooking oil goes to a processing manufacturing place. They turn into biodiesel. One of the uh, byproducts of biodiesel is glycerin. Uh, the glycerin we use to make the soap. So what we have here in this picture is um, soap made from the waste products that we've collected. And what ends up happening is we'll make them with students uh, most of the time, and we'll also make them for sale. Um, there, we can also make them into candles. We can make liquid soap. Um, we can make a variety of different materials. It's a really useful material, a uh, variety of different project, products from that material. And we also distill our own uh, essential oils. So we are a no plastic uh, essential oil, except for the, the bottle cap there. Um, but during the process production phase, we're using uh, glass and metal to you to work with the um, essential oils. Um, and we do sell that. But again, it's like we use it with students. So we make batches of it for classes. And then what will end up happening is we'll, we'll either have leftover or we'll get an order from somebody and then we'll either sell those directly or we'll offer them for sale to the community. Um, yeah, it's just a way to uh, to encourage people to buy local um, and also uh, really examine what it is that they're consuming. And um, go to the next slide here. So there is a question how we adapt during the difficult times. I personally am grateful to be in the IHUB team with the diverse education and experience background that make this team solid. During this time, we learn a lot about how to help one another and how we can gi give our best impact to the school. So during this time, we develop more than 50 modules for uh, learning neighborhood groups since the closure. And also we have one big project with the high school last time and we keep continuing in mentoring. So the question, uh, student and teacher or parents allowed to use the IHA facility during the pandemic? The answer is unfortunately no, because school has the rule that student and parents right now cannot uh, use the facility in the school. So how to connect with Innovation Hub? We love to hear feedback, criticism, and ideas. So feel free to send email 
or to comment on our social media. As you can see, we have that on our screen right now. There is email, Facebook, and Instagram. Our social media is also the platform where we showcase our project with students and the school. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, thank you, Dita and Diana. This is us uh, shortly before uh, we close the campus, not knowing we were going to close the campus, so we we're having a great time. Um, but that's the team and that's the space. Um, it's it's the entire building, so that's just one area of it. Um, but uh, the spaces that we talked about are all in this building, um, which makes it quite exciting. And uh, here are some activities that we have um, in the iHub uh, that are just kind of ongoing as students come in with their classes or we have a special activity with them. Um, okay, well, great. Thank you everyone for listening. We will start to look through some of these questions. And if we don't get to one, like, please, please uh, just post it again. Um, so we talked about the renewable energy projects with DITA. Um, are there are, are projects written into the curriculum for each grade level? So we, we have um, workshops and classes that we've written that fit with different uh, grade levels. And we offer these uh, opportunities to the teachers. Um, some take them up right away and some, some choose not to, and, and that's fine. We're not, uh, we're not um, we, don't, we don't require them to take these classes. Uh, because we are considered a specialist on campus. Um, and the after school, yes, so those are voluntary classes. So the school day ends at 3.15 and the after school activities go from th uh, 3.30 to 4.30 and students are allowed to sign up for those. Uh, there's many, many opportunities. There's gymnastics, for example. Um, there's chess club, there's other things that are going on that students can get involved with. So we're just one of the offerings. Um, students, yeah, we've, as Ibu Diana said, we, uh, we do get booked and overbooked uh, most of the time, uh, just because it's a nice opportunity for students to come in after kind of like a busy day, they kind of get to relax and um, be in the space longer than they would normally be able to at like a more uh, interactive, intimate level, which is nice. Um, where do you get the design thinking curriculum from IDEO? So it's funny you mentioned that. Um, my sister, who I'm living with now, works at IDEO, and uh, it's, a, it's been an influence in my life for quite some time. Um, but I also have a background in um, architecture. I have a master's of architecture from UC Berkeley. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, I've been at the Green School for three years, and maybe uh, Diana and um, Dita can mention how long they've been at the school as well. But um, Dita also has experience with design thinking. And um, throughout the time that I've been there and Dita's been there, um, there's been a lot of work done on that. So it's been many people have input uh, what we do and we are just showing kind of just a, a, quick, a quick preview really of what we, what we do do every day. Um, but yeah, a lot of it comes from uh, design thinking in from the design world. Um, so do we have grade 12, 13? So, so again, uh, we're, we, we run the IHUB. So th that question may be better for the admission team, but I, I will say that we do not have a 12, 13 grade at this time. There was uh, talk about it. Um, last year and uh, a requirement we have right now in place for high school in order to graduate from the green school you have to be there for grades 11 and 12 so um, that's that's to our knowledge that that's that's um, you might want to talk with a admissions counselor to get more information so um, is it possible to volunteer with you so unfortunately we do not uh, we, we actually, it's not allowed by the government 
to take volunteers. So um, Indonesia has very strict laws when it comes to labor laws. Um, every teacher, uh, every every um, non-Indonesian teacher has a working permit and they're required to have a working permit. Um, yeah, we've we've um, heard of places that take volunteers and end up getting in trouble with the government. So we try to avoid that. Um, it is possible if you're a parent to mentor students. So that's how it's, um, that's where that fits in. Um, yes, so during COVID this time period, we've closed the campus, everything's going online. We have uh, pivoted to how do we do online hands-on projects? And we've done that by gathering lists of materials that you might find in your house and making things with them. So we have um, right now this week with our younger students, we have um, basic construction classes using skewers and toothpicks and gummies and marshmallows and going through the process of building and designing something and um, iterating on that design, just for an example. Um, Thanks, sir. Before we yes. go to the next uh, question, maybe I can show some of our uh, IHUB products. So we make in BioLab. This is the hand sanitizer. And yeah, this is the essential oil. But also I I am in the iHub right now, so I can show you this is a 3D printing product. Yeah. And this is the bamboo. Bamboo uh, model that middle school, yeah. Middle school do with the uh, with the teacher on how to use Arduino and bamboo model. We also have this soap we made from his cooking oil. This is the eco printing product. Primary, primary school like doing this because they use hammer and how you say that knock to the, the plank on the on the uh, on the fabric like this and to make an imprint imprint uh, pattern on the back or the fabric and uh, Diana can you just mention how long you've been with the green school so we get an idea of that uh, I've been with Green School for more than two years right now, and I am one of the pioneer since the I have uh, founded. I was here before. Uh, I have runs very uh, like how you say that. I I have been here since the, yeah since the day since one. Since the beginning of the, of the I have yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Dita, can you mention how long you've been here for? Uh, I've been at Green School for around three years also. I can recall that I think we start at Green School like in this almost the same time. But I was not in the Innovation Hub. So I'm pretty new at the Innovation Hub. I think this is my first year at the Innovation Hub. Uh, before yeah. I was in the operations and doing operational projects more. So I'm so excited to join our educational uh, staff and working with the students. It's actually really, really satisfying. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, as, as we went through in the beginning, we have a very diverse team, um, super fun to work with, get into a lot of different projects, uh, as, as you've seen a few here. Um, I'll just maybe answer a few more questions. So, major challenges in facilitating projects in the iHub? Well, it's always just time and space. Um, we, we bring in students um, for a specific class and they, they almost come running in. It's, uh, they love coming in and working on different things that we have planned for them. Um, if we could, it would be great to have more space and, uh, and more time with the students. Um, ideally, we have what we did, which was uh, the project of THON. So over this uh, distance learning period, we, we were asked to work with the high school students for two days, and we we asked them to design, um, make, 
investigate something around food. And uh, what they came back with was amazing. Um, it was a lot of fun, a lot of interesting ideas, uh, a lot of different foods that were made. And we used it as a way to bring us together in this time. Uh, we all can relate to food, um, but it also was an opportunity for us to use that amount of time that we've never had that much time with the students at once uh, to really test that idea and see what would happen. And it was, it was great. So those videos that we produced from what they made are on Facebook if you want to check those out. Um, and then do we use local crafts and traditions and lessons? Yes, absolutely. So Dodon, who's our bamboo craftsman, he is uh, an expert in bamboo. Um, and also uh, Diana and Andina uh, come with a lot of um, traditional craft knowledge that they um, bring into different classes and uh, there's many there's many um, I guess there's many examples of that that we can talk about but yes, yes it is uh, used in the lessons absolutely um, so uh, is there a less uh, website we can find out more about green school courses and projects so the there's a, a website called green school everywhere I believe let me just look it up right now yeah, Green School Bali Everywhere. Dot Green School. Let me just uh, post this in the chat here. Um, if that loads, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if that is uh, password protected. I'm sorry if it is password protected, but that's where we're kind of running from right now, uh, as our classes are. Uh, online, it's now become our kind of like central place to work from. If that website doesn't work, um, I would encourage you to look at the Innovation Hub social media, Instagram and and Facebook, which which show a lot of the classes ongoing and finished. And um, if that doesn't get you there, I'd also connect with, with the admission team and also look at. Um, uh, the the Green School website. Okay, let me let me look this one up too. Um, it's just called yeah, it's just greenschool.org, which which might answer some questions um, on information that that is out there on the classes that we have. Um, and let's see, uh, student scholars. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. So we have. Um, uh, about 10% of our student body are local Balinese students who are on scholarships. And um, that's been one of the key points of the school is to keep that number as high as we can. Um, students come in at any year based on, based on when we have space for them to come in and they stay until they graduate. So we've had students start um, as young as uh, primary school that are still in the school. And we've also had students start later on that have already graduated. And those are all local scholar students and uh, their tuition is paid for. Um, so how can other students join? That's a great question. So uh, yeah, we're, everyone's, I think, I think it's a great moment for education to really take a hard look at itself and see what it can do. And we've had a lot of great experiment time and um, it's been a lot of fun to see what works and also understand what doesn't. And um, what we, what there's talk about is having uh, what we have distance learning, which is right now this, this time period of, you know, off campus learning. Um, it's actually possible to enroll a student in that curriculum. So again, I would I would suggest to to look at the uh, admission counselor, um, which actually I'll just I'll just maybe see if I can as we're talking I can see if I can find uh, that page, uh, and students can actually be enrolled in those uh, topics. And uh, yes, I agree uh, to start programs for the global students. So um, we, you know. Project-based learning is something that isn't uh, isn't so well accepted, I guess, uh, right now. In a lot of schooling, it's a lot of it's uh, pretty traditional. 
And um, we we really like to uh, turn that upside down and um, put the students in a position where they're going to be learning uh, more than they could ever learn in any other situation, um, giving them the um, agency to take on projects and understand what works and what doesn't, uh, expose them to a variety of things. I, I always like to say uh, we like to um, blow the students' minds in the nicest in the nicest way possible. I can say that, but we like them to come in with wow all over their face, and um, and most of the time it happens, and uh, they end up walking away with more skills than, than any other class could probably um, give them, which is great. Um, and of course, there are skills that you need outside of what we do in project based learning. But it's been really exciting and really rewarding to work with the students in this environment. And can people donate equipment for the? Uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Donate uh, donations are accepted. So we actually have. Uh, what do we have? Um, sewing machines that were donated by um, one of the Green School parents that was closing down their um, their workshop, uh, seam, seamstress workshop. Um, we have several other tools that have been donated. Uh, we have parents who have given um, an allocated a certain amount of money to go to equipment, which was how we expanded our woodworking area, which was a lot of fun um, to, to see that happen and see the students just absolutely um, absorb it <laughs> and use it. Um, yeah, but please, if you would like to donate uh, something for the iHub, you can get in touch with us um maybe i can do the um innovation hub at greenschool.org uh just as that's our email address if you'd like to connect with us directly uh happy to hear any feedback um, um or anything interesting that you might think that we need to know about or would be interesting to us love to hear it um and how do we choose students to participate at green school uh, there's a process that the admission teams goes through, and I, I not being an admissions um, person, I don't know much about the process. To be honest, um, we we do try to um, keep a, a, a student teacher ratio. Uh, again, I don't know what that ratio is, but it's um, it's a very good ratio. Uh, we try to keep that. Um, and we've been expanding since I've been here the past three years. We've we've expanded quite a bit. Um, we have a whole new campus for the high school that we'll uh, move into in August when we start our new year. And that has allowed space for the, the middle school to grow and the primary school to grow. So a lot of things are changing uh, this year. And are you also looking to expand to other places or countries? Yes. So uh, at this moment, there is a green school open in New Zealand. Um, there's also a green school being built in South Africa. Uh, both those places are doing distance learning with us and we've actually been working with them um, to help them as they are facing a lot of challenges as, as everyone else is. And there's um, other, other uh, countries that have become possible locations, but it comes from uh, a parent or an organization that wants to start one wherever they are. Um, and internships, we offer internships to Indonesians uh, exclusively. Uh, that's because if we were to offer a position to a non-Indonesian, uh, we would have to pay for a working permit. And above that, we only have a limited amount of working permits available for the school. So it's 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 pretty it's uh, it's good and it's bad. Uh, it limits a little bit of what we can do, but it also makes us look at our talented Indonesian staff, and uh, including Dita and Diana, who are uh, incredibly knowledgeable and um, bring bring just as much knowledge and enthusiasm as any other teacher could. Um, so, um, oh, thank you, yeah, so there's the admission page there. Yeah, so yeah, please, if you'd like to look more, get more information, uh, they're available, uh, feel free to contact them. They definitely have 
more answers to any questions you might have. Um, yes, yeah, so about the volunteering. So uh, Green School parents are allowed to mentor, but we are not allowed to take volunteers, unfortunately, um, if, if it's a non-Indonesian individual. Um, uh, just, just going along with um, the working permits and um, what I was mentioning before. So uh, it's been an hour. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining. Um, really great uh, to have all your questions. Um, there are some other webinars that are going on, so uh, feel free to join those as well. I believe this uh, video will be on YouTube. So if you missed anything, you can go back and, and look at it. And uh, yeah, feel free to drop us any questions you might have or the admissions team um, about the uh, Green School. Um, Dita and uh, Diana, do you have anything you want to add? Um, well, thank you so much for the time. It is really awesome for us to see you all here electronically we hope that we can see you uh, later and hopefully this pandemic can be solved soon and then students can go to the school like as usual because we are missing the school and i'm sure that students are also missing the schools and their friends at school so thank you so much for joining us uh yeah i, I just will mention that um uh, the school is planning to open August uh, of this year and is still um, accepting enrollments for this year. So, um, yeah, if that's something that's on your mind or you want more information, uh, please contact the admissions team. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, there is a question where you can follow us on social media. Maybe Baxter can go back to the previous slides. And feel free to send us email to innovationhub at greenschool.org. That is our social media, Facebook and Instagram. See you there too. OK, well, uh, thank you all so much. Um, Enjoy the rest of your days, afternoons, evenings. Bye now. Bye bye.